Perfect. So I would like to welcome you again on our webinar, Master in Cloud Migration. It's our second webinar from the series of Google Cloud Unfolded events that we organized together with Google Cloud. So today we will dive deeply into the processes, strategies, and best practices of migration to the cloud. Let me introduce our dear speakers. So today we'll have on stage our hosts and experts in Google Cloud Platform, Maxim Detsenko, Chief Technology Officer from Cloudfresh. Hi, Max. And uh, our second speaker, who without any doubts has a valuable expertise in Google Cloud products, uh, uh, Paulus Sernius, Customer Engineer from Google Cloud. Hi, Paulus. Good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, and I, I also like to tell you that we are having the quick polls running in the activities section in the bottom right corner. So please answer to small questions. What is your role in the company and where you currently hosting your infrastructure? It will totally help us to know you a little bit more better. A quick intro about who we are. Cloudfresh is a global Google Cloud, Zendesk, Asana, GitLab, Microsoft, and Okta partners. We are trusted by 1,400 customers in all over the world. Here you can see some of our customers who cooperate with us on different solutions and boost their operation within the cloud. Uh, here we'd like to highlight that we offer an entire cycle of professional services to support our customers on their work with the solutions. It could be different services from consulting and planning to implementation, training of your team and further support, especially for Google Cloud products. We developed various professional services packages such as infrastructure assessment, cloud backup and disaster recovery and many more. So I will share the link with you to the website page about our Google Cloud uh, services packages. You can explore there more. And today we have a special offer for you. Uh, we would like to provide you with a free infrastructure assessment session from our tech experts. So you are welcome to scan the QR code, fill out the quick form and get the offer. And last but not least, we also offer two gift certificates for the Google Merchandise Store for two best questions to our speakers. The winners, let's say, will be chosen by speakers themselves. So let the most interesting part begin. Max, the stage is all yours. Thanks. everyone uh i want also to thank you that you are joined us this this morning uh so uh, let's begin uh what is the topic of our meeting is the cloud migration and there are many reasons behind the cloud migration uh starting from uh like business innovation but also just uh, simple technical things like uh capacity demands if you have uh, different workloads uh during the day or month or year uh you have to to have uh some uh workloads reserves uh and which you pretty need on the uh, peak loads but uh they're like <clears throat> just eating the energy uh, all other time uh, but also from like business perspective and we are trying to concentrate uh on the series of um, uh, webinars uh, on the business users uh it's always cheaper if you were uh with us uh, on our previous session uh you probably know that it is uh always cheaper than uh, on-prem infrastructure from the uh, total cost of ownership point of view so uh there are many reasons but also for sure uh there are many uh obstacles uh on this way and uh, you see some um numbers there are a lot of complaints uh, and constraints for uh, cloud migration so uh, 
that is something that uh, gives you a lot of benefits, but also uh, like uh, not simple uh, from time to time, frightening. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of users which uh, don't migrate because the number of constraints is pretty big. And uh, actually, uh, for that, Google uh, designed the uh, Google Cloud Rapid Migration Program, RAMP, uh, in short, uh, which uh, consists of methodology and a comprehensive set of tools uh, for the different stages of the migration. And for sure, the partner infrastructure, uh, part of which uh, we actually are. Uh, the ramp is uh, really uh, like complete infrastructure, complete work um, framework for uh, migrating from readiness assessment uh, to planning, foundation building, and uh, actually migration. Uh, and the core of uh, all this process is migration center. Uh, this is the, uh, at the moment, actually already the uh, like section in the Google Cloud console, uh, which uh, has uh, inside the, uh, all the set of the instruments for the different stages like you, like you see on the slide, slide uh, for uh, migration. Uh, and uh, it has like Google uh, first party tools, uh, underlying platform. It, uh, it, it, it actually sits in the project where you are migrating to. Uh, it is uh, easy. It is uh, as easy as it is possible. It's um, comprehensive and it is, uh, I would say, even intuitive. Uh, and so uh, has the uh, all things, all security and compliance and all other things which uh, are sitting in the Google Cloud itself. So the first stage, first step is the estimate. Uh, it's something uh, designed for you to uh, like have a quick look uh, how much may cost the uh, uh, your infrastructure and your workloads in the cloud uh, it is simple you will uh, actually see this in the demo section uh, in, in in the middle of the of the session but uh, what is uh, in short uh, you're just putting the numbers of uh, number of vcpu storage memory uh, licenses, operating system licenses, application licenses, and uh, have the uh, quick estimation of uh, your costs. Uh, and uh, on the different levels with uh, consideration of, uh, for example, Oracle or SAP licenses and machines, uh, and you may, uh, if your migration uh, way is supposed to be not at once but in like three years five years you will have the cost estimation uh divided uh spread over this period you uh, you plan like this and paulius will show it to you uh later then uh the next stage is discovery uh, okay, the number of the CPUs is okay, but for sure, most of us have uh, uh, like over committing on resources uh, on prem just to have this reserve I spoke about uh, earlier. And uh, this stage uh, gives you an opportunity to, to, to put the uh, agent uh, like uh, on, on your uh, data center and it studies all the workloads on the perspective of uh, CPU uh, load, memory load, storage load, and all other things. Uh, and uh, it like collects only the data about the workloads, no, no data about your actually data. 
Uh, and then uh, you have the discovery summary uh, with a real with a consideration to real uh, loads of your equipment, of your systems. And you have the comprehensive report uh, about the system. Then assessment. Uh, Assessment uh, gives you an opportunity to uh, right size your uh, the results of the discovery uh, and projects it to the uh, on the Google infrastructure. Uh, that's uh, um, like uh, even in sometimes it's uh, even more important that uh, it discovers also the uh, interconnections between your services uh, to be able to plan uh, that you like uh, if services uh, are highly connected uh, and you move them uh, together to, to the cloud uh, so you uh, your users will not experience the uh, unexpected the um, delays in the work so uh, the user uh, to, to, to save the user experience and actually technical interconnections uh, then uh, system offers the variance of uh, placing uh, your systems on the cloud uh, like it proposes the uh, uh, systems the uh, uh, machine families uh, and also you may do it with a different uh, different aggressiveness, I would say, uh, of uh, sizing optimization. Uh, so you always have a choice. You may um, compare the different approaches uh, so that uh, gives you an opportunity to weigh the risks and uh, like approaches uh, to the to the migration, and also it gives you the uh, up to date uh, pricing on every approach, uh, with a, in different regions and uh, with the different types of systems, with Sultan systems, VMware engine, or just uh, compute engine, which is like vir virtual native virtual means of uh, Google Cloud. So you may compare uh, the cost of each of them. So, and uh, after you do this, you have a pretty nice online view. This is the uh, um, Google's interface, which you will see for sure uh, in a couple of minutes. So, uh, the next stage is definitely plan because, uh, as uh, one of my teachers uh, told, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And uh, the uh, planning of uh, migration uh, means that you have a, a comprehensive tool set for uh, planning what you are uh, migrating first, second, third uh in which groups uh in which timelines and so on so forth uh with uh with consideration of uh each approach some of the systems you may want to just lift and shift just simply rehost uh put as it is to a cloud but uh also with a replatforming or refactoring uh, if it makes sense, which you know from the previous step. And uh, planning migration waves with, uh, with looking on different, uh, um, different parameters, different, uh, different things on the location, maintenance windows, business impact, and so on. So uh, that gives you an opportunity to, to do it thoroughly and to be sure that uh, you're doing it all right. Uh, and then that we, we have the migration plan with like standard, uh, standard approach with uh, assessing, planning, migrating and optimizing and then going to, to the next wave. Uh, Actually, as I as I told, uh, 
you are not bound to the uh, one uh, approach in uh, in migrating your infrastructure you may use uh, all of them uh, in parallel so that gives you uh, planned flexibility i would say now uh, uh paulius uh, that's for uh time for a demo uh i'm stopping sharing the slides and you the stage is all yours that's great thank thank you max uh so good morning everyone my name is paulius i'm an actual customer engineer here in google so today i'll walk you through um a kind of a demo so it's going to be just to showcase what migration center can do for you and how you can achieve certain things with it. So it can do estimations of your costs and you can see how much it may cost you to move to the cloud, as well as allow it to automatically detect the machines within your environment to see how much things will cost within the cloud. So the first thing I will go over is getting initial costs. So this is more a manual approach. So I've already created one here, um, which I selected for on-premises in my example. Uh, you can select, if you wish, uh, a SAP environment as well, or if you have any data warehousing. But for our sake, um, in, in this demo, we're going to go with the on-prem approach, which is the one I chose. So once I click Start, it will allow me to edit it. So since I created one already, so I'll just edit it, and I'll show you what's inside. So in my case, I am based in Europe. I think most of us are at this stage. So um, I chose Europe. And then also for price tracking, I didn't go with any commits at the moment. I just want to see what if I just take everything that I have and move it to the cloud as is. So then I click Next. Then I know roughly my environment could have about 1,200 CPUs. So I input as a number. You can also change it if you wish. But in my case, 1,200 sounds like the right number. Again, this takes a bit of time to estimate yourself. So that's actually the approach that you do without the actual agent that Maxim was talking about earlier. So this is just pretty much, if you actually know the values, you can actually input them and get a really quick value out of it. Also 4,800 memory, so just specify the actual memory of my machines in total. Um, also, you can specify how much storage you have across the board on your data centers. So in my case, I have 1,000 or 100 uh, terabytes um, of storage. I can also specify the breakdown. So let's say if I know, if I know exactly I have about, I don't know, 40% of my per, uh, persistent disk as storage, uh, also have 60% of it as object storage. And if I were to have file storage, I can also specify that. So let's say here, so then I can change the value, um, let's say 35, 35, just to make up the 100%. So this way, I can actually break it down and understand, in that sense, how much it'll cost me roughly for the storage side of things. Also, if you wish, you can edit the networking. So if you know exactly how much traffic you're looking at, um, the egress, ingress, and all those things, you can edit them here. In my case, I just left them as default because it actually estimates it pretty well. Then I click Next. And uh, as I mentioned before, if you are working with Oracle or SAP, you can tick those as well. You can specify how many databases you have, the vCPUs available and such. So these are the options. If you know the SAP one as well, you can input them here. In my scenario, I don't have any, so I just left them. And um, then I know I have uh, loads of Windows servers as well as the Linux servers. So then you can actually have a little breakdown here, uh, which is pretty much, I know I have more Windows servers, so I thought, OK, 60% sounds like the right number for me. So I chose 60% here. And then 40% of my servers are Linux based for the developers. OK, so then I know I have page you go licensing model. So you can also choose bring your own license. So that makes things cheaper if you already own your own licenses. So in my case, um, I don't have the licenses, so I just want to pay as you go. Again, if you have Microsoft SQL Server, you can actually spe specify it as well in here. So um, that's also giving a nice little breakdown if you have standard edition, enterprise, or web edition. So let's say if 100% of your servers are actually standard, you can specify that as well, just to make up the 100%. And then you can specify percentage of servers running SQL. So let's say 10%, and that's it. And that will add it to the total. So 
I click next. And then the next thing is the actual timeline. So, and here you can also specify, so we can actually create a nice report that gives you like um, a step um, in each year to show you how much it will cost you to actually migrate the things to the cloud. And then it'll give you step-by-step step the increments on how much you're gonna be paying. So you can adjust those values if you wish. In my case, I just left it um, default just for the sake of the demo. So click Submit. So that is done, now it's completed. So now I can just click View Details. And here is the report that I was talking about. So um, it gives you nice little steps and the breakdown. So in year one, I'm gonna be paying roughly this amount. Then year two, increases a little bit, increases a little bit, increases a little bit, increases a little bit, until I have everything migrated over the five year period. Also, we can see here that you have uh, lots of compute engine instances, the storage breakdown, the networking side of things, and the licensing costs and such. So if you wanted to dig in deeper, you can actually expand those and you can see which is the recommended uh, machine types as well. So you can see N2, E2. Um, it tells you the pricing for each. Um, there's a good few little bits you can actually explore here. I may not go into too much detail, but I think you understand what I'm talking about. So let's say if you want to see the licenses as well, all the cost breakdowns are actually here. So it's very, very interesting. And it's just on the fly and it took me, what, five minutes to create this, as long as you know the values. Now we're gonna explore the alternative way. So this one is actually a little bit different. Mm. So um, as Maxim mentioned before, we deploy an agent. And what happens there is that the agent goes through your environment and tries to ping the machine and sees if it's alive. Then it tries to understand what the CPU memory is and the storage is. And then tries to understand how much use um, is it actually being utilized, how much the utilization is on it. So in my case, uh, let's see here. So we'll go with data import first. So First thing you need to do is create um, an agent on the cloud, actual collector that is gonna wait and look for the actual um, agent to send the information to. So the data import, you click add data. Then in here, you can allow it to scan your environment or if you wish, um, you can actually run an offline report so you don't have to do any connection, nothing of that sort as I have currently set up. So you can upload a report and it'll give you the same result. But in my case, I chose to scan my environment. So I have a deployed an agent. I can specify the client name. So the client name could be, I don't know, test. Then you need to set up a service account. So service account is going to be sitting on, on your cloud environment. So this is within Google. And what it does, it just pretty much allows this um, migration center application that's called our API to work. That's all it does. And then I know an estimate, I don't have more than 10 assets, so I can specify 10. Unless you have like hundreds or thousands, you can specify whichever number you wish here. Um, it doesn't matter too much, but it just gives a better estimate because it, it allows the agent to understand how many uh, machines to expect, okay? Um, and then it's going to collect for the next 90 days. And then um, if you have any terms and conditions, um, you can also add it in here. It's just an extra URL. In my case, I didn't need to. So I also have, this already created, so I won't create another one. So this is what it looks like. So there's an agent here, it's currently active. It's going to be scanning for the next 90 days, I can show you. So it tells you here, so it's using that migration service account. Um, currently I have estimate of three, because I know I have exactly three machines in my test lab, just to show you. And then it sh shows the client version and much more. And also if you go here, it allows you to download the actual agent. So this is what I was talking about. This is the actual agent installation file. This is important because you can download it and then set it up in your environment and allow that agent to kind of run through everything within your environment and discover it. Okay, so now that we have that set up, then what happens next is pretty much it discovers your assets. So in my case, uh, as I mentioned, I have three VMs. So one of them is, is the actual agent VM. This is where I actually installed the agent. And then I have another Windows machine and a Linux machine. So for testing sake, that's that's how many I have, three machines. Um, you can also add them manually here if you wish. So again, it's the same way, just adding and uploading files if you want. Um, again, so 
Next thing you should do is create a group. So again, if you have loads and loads of machines and you have multiple data centers, multiple geolocations and such, you can create groups. So let's say I can click on create a group. I'll call it um, data center two. Then I go to add assets. And then I can select which ones I want to add to it. So I know, let's say, this one's going to belong to Data Center 2. And then I can create a, gr a group for Data Center 1, which I already have for Windows, let's say. That's just to kind of separate things out to make things much easier logically when you're looking at it and to understand, OK, if I have one data center, how much will it cost? If I have second data center, how much it will cost? And you can also group them together, if you wish, to see how much everything in the overall will cost. So I won't do that at the moment because I already have a group co called DC1, so data center one. And, and then finally, so you can have a look here. Once the agent has run through my environment, it can tell you how much um, machines I have, uh, how many cores. Um, you can see the breakdown if you have Windows versus Linux. Um, it can also tell you how much RAM you're looking at. So again, if you run through this, you can also then go through the overview as we did before, and then go through the actual manual calculation if you wish. But I think this is more beneficial because this will tell you more real results because you don't have to input anything manually. So um, it tells me that I have two machines and uh, two of those have less than four gigs of RAM. You can see that one of them is 16 gigs of RAM. It tells me that I have less than 100 gigabytes of storage. Um, it tells me the cores amount, the storage used and such. So the next thing from that, you can actually create a full report. So I've done a couple of here. So if you click here, create a report, let's call it report. And then click next. So in here, that's what I was talking about. So you can actually tick and select which actual groups you want the report to be going into. So let's say in my case, I only have one. So the data center one is going to be the one that's going to appear on the report. So this is where it comes in if you want to divide the two of them. Then we go next. So that's the interesting part for me at least. So in here, you can create something called um, kind of preferences. So the migration preferences themselves. So um, I'm going to go over that in a little bit. But what that means is you can select and decide, let's say I want to have one year commit, three year commit, or actually just on demand, no commit or anything like that. So I've pre-created a couple of those already, which I'll show you later on what they look like. So let's say I want to see all three of them at once. Great, I can do that. So I can select this and then select the on demand. So what this will give me is one year commit, three year commit, and also on demand pricing side by side. So then I go and generate the report. That shouldn't take very long, just a couple of seconds. There we go. And then once we go to the report, let me just close that. OK, so in here, as you've pretty much seen this in the slides before, so the approach is estimation, discovery, assessment, the planning phase, the reiteration of planning, and then migration. OK, so then it groups it for me by the DC1, so as I asked it to do. So I tick DC1 before. OK, so now it gives me a full breakdown of the operating system, cores as well, the storage, everything else. But in here, it's more in-depth, in the support itself, simply because when I scroll down, you're going to see this. So that's what I selected earlier. So I wanted to see what's one year commit, um, three years commit, or perhaps just on demand. And in here, it actually gives you a nice little breakdown of let's say, um, the target platform. You can actually select this as well, if you wish. So you can go to um, VMware Engine. Um, also, for the licensing, I select the page you go, as you know. And then it gave me balanced disk type as well. That's what I selected. I will go back to that in a second, just to show you. Um, again, so then it gives me um, pretty much the sizing uh, optimization. So for mine, I selected moderate. And then pretty much the CPU usage and everything else was chosen as well. And then the more interesting part for, I think, everybody here is the pricing. So um, it gives you a nice little breakdown of how much you're going to be paying for compute, breakdown of the storage pricing, the egress pricing, and such. And then you can see at the end the total amount. This is what I'm looking at if I were to migrate to the cloud using my currently running workloads, wherever they are in data center one. It just pretty much took what I have, and it shows me, OK, this is how much it will cost me if I were to move to the cloud. And that's that. So 
I'll show you one more thing. So these are the guys I was talking about earlier. So you can create your own custom uh, commits or no commits if you prefer. So I'll show you how that works. So let's say I wanted to do um, your commit. So I can choose which region I want to migrate to. So let's say this will influence the pricing. So this is pretty much to tell you which data center is going to be located in. So let's say I wish to be in, let's see, Europe West 4, OK? So I know Europe West 4 is kind of gen generally close to me. So I, I would like it to be there. So I, I want to know how much it will cost if I were to migrate exactly to West 4, OK? Then you can choose what you want to do here. So um, you can actually have no preference or sole tenancy or VMware engine or compute engine. But in my sake, I want to stick to compute engine because I know it just for my sake, I think compute engine just makes sense because I'm running a couple of web servers and such. OK, and then I went here for uh, for compute engine. You can actually select um, if you want to specify manually. I want to specifically go with N2D machines. I can select that. I can also force it to select which um, storage type I need. So if I know for sure, OK, those machines are, you know, they're necessarily, they need to have an SSD. So I can select that if I wish. And then pay as you go model again for the licensing. We went over that earlier. And here is the interesting bit, so the sizing optimization. So in here, you can select how do you want the algorithm to kind of run and size the machines for you. So if you want to go aggressive, you can actually go aggressive. So this is going to be um, kind of going towards cost savings, right? So it, it's a very, very cost saving kind of uh, option. You can also do custom. So if, if I know that my storage is exactly, exactly that, so it could stick to one. So that means it's going to be exact to exact. There's no variability in between. So also for the CPU usage, so you can make make um, kind of a, a judgment call and say like my CPUs are always running at ninety percent. My environment is just always like utilized like crazy. And then you can just adjust those values, and this will also give you a better report and a much easier to understand report as well. So. These are the things you can do. Also, you can um, estimate the egress traffic. So let's say if, if I know I have a lot of egress so as a web server, for example, um, I'm serving, I don't know, um, movies or, or video files or something like that. So my egress probably is going to be pretty high. So I can adjust that value. And this will give me a better pricing as well. Again, just take keep, keep in mind that these results, even when you create them, they're not exactly 100%. I mean, it's very hard to estimate 100%. But this will get you about to 99.9% .9 as close as possible to the real pricing that you're going to be looking at if you were to migrate to the cloud. And then the last thing is pretty much selecting if you want to do on demand, one year commit, or three year commit. So this just gives you the options if you were to commit or not commit, and just to see the price differences. Again, commitment is really good, especially if you if you know exactly you want to be on a cloud and you know you're going to be there long term. It just makes sense to go for one year or three year commit. So it just saves you in the long run. And that concludes my demo pretty much. Um, so it just um, kind of hopefully it helps you just to understand. If you have any questions at all, uh, please do let us know. Um, feel free to kind of ping us on the chat or if you want to ask, ask away. Thank you so much. And I'll pass it back to Maxim. Hi again. So um, after we uh, assessed uh, and planned uh, our migration, uh, then we have actually uh, to migrate. <clears throat> and then we decide uh, which path uh, we, uh, we choose. Uh, like migrating to virtual machines or to Kubernetes, for example, or uh, even serverless technologies uh, like App Engine, uh, we go to migration. And Google has uh, a whole lot of instruments for uh, migrating different types of sources. <clears throat> uh, for virtual machines from VMware, you're on-prem or uh virtual data center vmware uh and from aws and azure to uh compute engine 
and also you have the instruments for migrating the uh, containers from like from standard virtual machines to containers for uh, Google Kubernetes engine or Anthos, which is also actually a couple of weeks uh, as GKA Enterprise or Cloud Run, uh, and also the complete set of migrating the for migrating the your databases from on-prem from Microsoft SQL or Postgres or uh, MySQL or even uh, from Oracle to MySQL or Postgres uh, and uh, for sure the BigQuery migration service for that data warehouses and actually I should mention here that Google uh, like has some unique things uh, inside uh, and one of them is definitely the BigQuery which is uh, Google's business data warehouse but it also uh, the data lake uh, it it may work with a structured on the structured data it may use as a source uh, different things like internal storage or uh, object storage or even databases which are sitting on the on other on other cloud like uh, in Azure for example. Uh, and uh, it has the embedded uh, machine learning uh, where you can uh, build the uh, machine learning models uh, just using the SQL language. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of things uh, and they're all uh, available to you. Then uh, uh, the main instrument mostly used is migrate to virtual machines, uh, which is, like, like I said before, uh, may be used for migrating from uh, VMware or, uh, for example, AWS. Uh, and that's uh, a cool streaming technology which uh, invisibly uh, streams your uh, machines, virtual machines to cloud. Uh, you can control it, you may uh, use the sandbox, uh, you like migrated the uh, virtual data of virtual machines, you may uh, start them on uh, in the sandbox, check that uh, everything is okay, uh, and then uh, you just push uh, the, the button, uh, which is called cut over, and uh, machines are automatically started in the production uh, cloud environment with uh, downtime of like two, three minutes at most, uh, which is really cool. And uh, this thing uh, is speaking directly with, uh, directly to VMware. Uh, and uh, uses its uh, snapshot technologies. So uh, that's safe, uh, that's um, uh, like fast, and that's uh, something you, you may, re you can really control. And uh, what should I say uh, about this is that uh, in one connector for the VMware engine, VMware, may uh, stream uh, up to 500 of machines at once and uh, if you if you need to stream like 2000 machines to migrate 2000 machines in one way you uh, by one wave you just have to install four uh, connectors and you are in business uh, but for sure, the virtual machines is commonly accepted technology. But uh, at the moment, if uh, it's not, uh, if not to say obsolete, uh, but it's for sure legacy. And uh, cloud is something that built uh, all around containers and Kubernetes. And actually, Kubernetes is the Google's technology, uh, which Google invented for its own services, uh, like. YouTube or Gmail and all other things uh, and then uh, like given out to the to the public as a, as open open source but uh, sell the Google technology and uh, Google is the biggest contributor uh, into this technology 
so uh, if you want to utilize the uh, uh, Kubernetes and containers uh, uh, like um, the things that it can give to you uh, this uh, like uh, very uh, big saving of result because you don't have uh, the image of operating system inside each container, each application, and uh, big flexibility, big portability, uh, and uh, like high availability by default. Uh, Google has the instrument which uh, gives you an opportunity automatically or semi automatically convert. Mm -hmm your uh, virtual machines to containers and uh, here you may uh, use for sure like virtual machines but if you use uh, technologies like kubernetes engine or anthos or uh, cloud run and app engine uh, which are container based uh, things uh, the higher you go the big uh, the uh, bigger part of uh, your infrastructure uh, is managed by google and you just don't have to mess with it so uh summarizing and wrapping up uh google has uh, a set of uh like work framework uh, for uh, simplifying your uh journey to the cloud uh from the uh, early assessments to the migration itself uh i would say i i should say i should mention that all of the instruments are uh, actually free to use uh you don't pay uh, a penny for it uh but uh at the same time uh, those in, those free instruments give you uh opportunity to assess to plan to plan your uh, ROI uh, to plan your migration way and uh, for sure it has the uh, um, partner infrastructure part of which uh, we are and so we can uh, assist you in the in every step of this migration uh on the level of consulting or uh direct technical support or direct technical actual execution of the uh migration so uh this is something that gives you an opportunity to migrate your infrastructure to the cloud uh and not to be scared uh like and feel support uh on every step of this way so uh the next part is uh i guess q a section session uh, uh anastasia yeah so uh thank you for this speech thank you Paulus. thank you maxim uh now uh, everyone who has some questions you can just ask it in the chat on or activate your microphones so we will be waiting a couple of minutes for questions to come first one i see already done uh yeah we will share uh the slides and recording of the presentation feel free to ask any questions that you may have um that's totally fine Anything that you're not sure about? Oh, I see two is coming first from Karen. So, uh, Maxim Polis, what is the difference in size and optimization? What is better to choose, aggressive or moderate, and what is the difference? Yeah, so I can probably take that one. So, aggressive would be kind of um, optimize more for the costs. So, it's take into account that um, let's say if you have um, the machine resources currently kind of strict and you want to lower them down as well. So it's going to reduce a little bit of your performance if you go aggressive. If you go moderate, um, it's going to be kind of a balanced approach between performance and cost. So you're not cutting down the cost too much to create that uh, leverage into kind of the pricing. So to make everything cheaper. So that's, that's the difference between the two. I'll send you the full breakdown in a second as well. 
Thank you, Paulus. And we have the other one. Uh, what is the main reason to migrate to the cloud? If I'm sorry, if have our own dedicated service infrastructure. So please, Maxime. Oh well, uh, actually, it's the uh, like economic and philosophical and uh, like technical question, uh, which. Uh, was uh, like our previous session was dedicated to that uh, but in short uh, there are a couple of things uh, it is simpler uh, it is cheaper because we don't have to uh, operate uh, the infrastructure you should you shouldn't have it actually on on your um, on your balance uh, you shouldn't have to uh, have all the uh, mm, like counting uh, things with the with the infrastructure. Uh, you shouldn't decommission this. Uh, you don't have to break the infrastructure, like maintaining uh, maintaining operating systems, <clears throat> upgrading the systems, decommissioning the systems uh and uh from the business uh perspective it gives you an opportunity to uh have the resources you need uh like now in in, in your peak loads or new projects not uh with the purchase and installing and all other processes just like in 90 seconds you have you may have the new machine or in a couple of minutes if uh programmed with terraform or something uh like infrastructure of any size uh it is much more secure than uh, any uh, privately owned infrastructure it's much more uh fast it has uh much better the uh, communication lines and then you uh may ever afford <clears throat> and uh like creation of the new resources is like half of the thing but the uh, I, I would say even bigger half if, if i if i if i may uh is the possibility to uh, get rid of uh, any resources you uh, you don't need anymore and uh, that's the way to have the uh, absolutely um, balanced and uh, uh, like optimize cash flow uh because you don't pay uh in advance for the for the equipment you would have you you would probably possibly theoretically use in five years uh and you just pay for what you really uh used uh last month so uh there are more reasons because last, last time we uh, I spoke uh, like one hour about this but uh that's like i would say main points uh, or some of them thank you max in the meantime while we are going through another question i'd like you i'd like to ask you to check your uh internet connection or maybe this is the headphones because you like slightly missing we are slightly missing you Sorry. just like maybe you can uh, check it so another question uh, uh, while having uh, virtual machines in gcp it's necessary to create a high availability cluster for important service hosted by the server or gcp takes care about it by itself oh well uh, actually, uh, you don't have to do something. Uh, if your server, if the server uh, which hosts your um, workload breaks, Google uh, for sure uh, will restart it on the other physical host. Uh, it will be done automatically. But uh, anyway, there are different approaches to that. You may uh, set up the HA clusters but you all may use the uh, health checks uh, and uh, um, managed instance groups uh, which were uh, will uh, regularly check the health of your machine and restart it if uh, something is wrong 
uh, or use the Kubernetes. So there are many approaches. I, I see that uh, Paulo has already uh, uh, responded on that, but uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to say a couple of things uh, in advice. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Paulus, for responding in the chat. Uh, so next question, if uh, any specific cloud provider restricted or cons in cloud in Google migration? Uh, well, Paulus. Um, I actually asked to rephrase that because I didn't really understand what that meant. So um if you're still around uh, would you be able to explain the question again uh sudantera please or if you want you can uh, unmute your microphone and just ask it live no pressure yeah of course. uh i'm on here uh see uh, if uh, right now you've shown that uh, aws and azure compatibility if uh, apart from any other uh, cloud provider like oca or uh, like uh, open shift uh, the same steps which we have to follow or uh, is anything which we need to get in the plugin and then we can pull all the stuffs so uh, it doesn't matter where you put the agent um, as long as it's a virtual machine and it's able to communicate with the rest of the machines in your environment so it doesn't mind which cloud you're on or is on prem or it could be anywhere you wish, as long as it's a virtual machine that supports the agents. It could be Linux or Windows machine. Um, once you install it, it just discovers all your assets within your environment. Does that answer your question then? Yes, yes. Uh, sure. And uh, one more thing, the patches, uh, how uh, it is come certification matrix uh, Google will provide or uh, which you will match with that uh, exact what assets and uh, what is the back, back end for that. Uh, uh, three-tier architecture or two-tier architecture those certification metrics is uh, applicable uh, applicable on this uh, migration certification metrics what do you mean by that yeah it is like a patch up to the level of patches which need to be uh, updated then only can pull that uh, all the assets like if the example one thing is a database which i am running with uh, the backward compatibility like a 12c okay uh, but uh, the whatever the however the things uh, your google will support uh, some of the patch level those patch level you have the you have already determined or uh, uh, we need to be uh, compare with the certification matrix from our end so um the discovery doesn't really mind about versions so um basically if you were still running 2012 sql server or something like that as long as it's standard edition it will just discover it as standard um again once you're migrating to the cloud that means you kind of have to adjust that a little bit manually yourself if you're migrating you might as well upgrade the server versions to the latest one so you're kind of supported for another 10 years whatever it is for the sql servers right so it's it's some sort of an adjustment you need to make on your end to actually be able to kind of go to the latest versions and, in order to get support, right? So if you're still learning 2008, I think it's already out of support. So it, whether it's on-prem or whether it's on cloud, if you put 2008, it's still not supported by Microsoft any longer, something like that, right? Yeah, okay. Does that make yes. sense? Yeah, yeah, I got it, yeah. Yeah, Thank you. okay. Thanks, Paulus. Uh, we have another question uh, from Dan. Uh, what are the Google Cloud uh, UCPs, so maybe unique points, advantages compared to Azure or AWS? Oh, well, um, in general, um, like if you to say uh, globally, holistically, yeah. Uh, Clouds from the big three are more or less on par, but there are some really unique things which you may get from the Google. Uh, one of them I mentioned, the, the, the best uh, business data warehouse on the planet at the moment. Uh, and we even we have the customers which use uh, Azure or uh, AWS and still using the uh, BigQuery. 
uh the other things they're like like the next uh, uh chain in the in this uh is the bi a looker is also the best thing you you may ever have uh you have the best uh, ml ai uh opportunities and possibilities with the uh, cloud uh, including the special uh, Google designed uh, TPUs, uh, like special processing unit units for MLAI uh, workloads. Uh, also, uh, the uh, game and uh, budgeting support, budgeting control, setting the budgets is uh, Google's is the most uh, transparent and uh, manageable. Uh, and so uh, it gives you actually even on the uh, level of the just simple virtual machine on the computer it gives you the uh, unprecedented uh, flexibility because in uh, most cloud providers uh, in most uh, machine families you have uh, like um, preset uh, sizes of the machines and if you need uh, like uh, eight vcpus you will use 32 uh, gigabytes of memory uh, and like eight eight uh you will not have it on uh, azure on and uh, aws in most uh, families and in google uh um, like except couple of families very specialized you have the opportunity to uh, um, have the right size machine like custom uh machine uh there are some limitations but uh they're uh like a big stadium uh compared to uh, what what you have from aws or uh, asia uh well like uh also the main main points because we we, we may speak uh about the for uh some hours but uh in short uh, I, I would mention uh, those. Uh, so. Thank you, Max. Uh, so I see the question from Oleg, but uh, I see that Polis has already answered it. So. Yeah. yeah so I think Dan, Dan mentioned that. Uh, yeah, sorry. I think Dan mentioned that. Um, that Maxim's answer was very hard to understand because of the breaking in, in the connection. So if you have just a small summary, just maybe pop it in the chat, Max, if you can, or Dan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Paulus. So I think we have no more questions uh, and we can go to our gift session and um, we need to choose two a question you find the most interesting for you. Uh, so let's start maybe from you, Paulus, while Max is answering the question. Which question you liked the most? Uh, if uh, to speak uh, of uh, my preferences i would say that uh, the best one uh, was the um from i think from my end it would be sudan terra um i like this question and and you had also a couple of questions from that question so i really liked it that, that would be my pick mm -hmm. can you just uh sudan terra Yes, it's your mm -hmm. choice, Polis. Okay, so and my choice I'm... will be Yaroslav. Yaroslav, okay. So Yaroslav Sudantera, if I pronounce it correctly, I will send uh, to you the certificate. Congratulations on your small win today. And if uh, you receive nothing from me till tomorrow, please write a message to hi uh, cloudfresh.com i will just put it in the chat and you'll get it anyway uh, so thank you uh, for choosing thank you for asking so many questions and just uh, the last 
uh, I want to remind you that we are having a special offer, uh, a free session with Cloud Fresh Tech, Tech Experts, uh, a, free, a free infrastructure assessment session. So you can scan the QR code. Here's the quick form and we'll get in touch with you and schedule a meeting. So I will leave this page till the end for you to have the opportunity to scan it. And I'd like to thank you, our speakers, for their time, for the insightful information. Uh, Paulis, Maxim, maybe you have something to add? Like, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paulus. Thank you, Anastasia. Uh, thank you for all who joined and uh, stayed with us uh, until the end. I hope it was useful and it was interesting. And we are uh, like waiting for you uh, for your to, to, to participate in your uh, cloud migration journey. Yes, just to add to that, thank you so much for just being here and spending time with us. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. And it was fun for us to share the knowledge and just to see how things go. Um, if you ever need any help or something like that, we're here to help. So thanks very much.